Now let's talk about this problem on the variation of gas pressure with volume. A container is divided into two parts by a partition. One of these parts has a volume V initial and is filled with a dilute gas. The other part is empty. Remove the partition and wait until the final equilibrium condition is attained where the molecules of the gas are uniformly distributed throughout the entire final volume V final. Has the total energy of the gas been changed? Use this result to compare the average energy per molecule um, and the average speed of a molecule in the equilibrium situations before and after the removal of the partition. What is the ratio of the pressure exerted by the gas in the final situation to that of the pressure exerted by it in the initial situation? So, uh, as I read this problem statement, I see that it's a dilute gas. So, basically, um, I can assume that this is an ideal gas and uh, therefore elementary kinetic theory can be applied. So, for part A of the problem, uh, I want to see if the total energy has been changed. So, here's the situation. I have an, a partition uh, in between an empty space and an initial volume. And then I remove the partition. The gas fills the entire volume, be final. And at equilibrium, it reaches the uniform state. Now, it doesn't say that this container was isolated from the environment. Uh, so, basically, I can assume that at the beginning, uh, this container was in thermal equilibrium with its environment. So, let's assume that I have a total of capital N molecules because there's uh, no statement about adding or removing molecules. The total number of molecules must be fixed. And also, uh, for the sake of simplicity, let's assume that this is a, a monatomic uh, gas. And uh, let's see what happens. Well, what would change the total energy of the gas? The total energy of the gas can be changed by doing uh, work on the gas or adding heat to the gas. So this Q uh, plus W. So either we have to have uh, energy transfer in the form of heat to or out of the gas or work done on the gas or there should be work done by the gas uh, in order to have uh, a change in its internal uh, energy. Now, uh, so this is the first law of thermodynamics. Uh, so basically, I'm, I'm going to uh, assume that the container was in thermal equilibrium uh, at the beginning with its environment. Uh, there shouldn't be any heat exchange with the environment. So if the container is in thermal equilibrium with the ambient, the environment, there will be no heat flow. And in the process of removing this partition, uh, we're not applying any force on these gas molecules. So the, the way they expand is through random collisions uh, between the molecules and between the molecules and the walls of the container. So uh, also I have uh, the total force F applied on the uh, gas molecules is 
uh, zero no external forces therefore if you look at the work done on the gas it's going to be zero so with this I can argue that uh, since I will have uh, Q is equal to zero the work done on the gas is zero so there should be no change in its um, total energy delta E must be equal to zero so the the answer to this question therefore um, the total energy of the gas does not change now uh, we're talking about the average energy per molecule um, the average energy per molecule initially is going to be the total energy E divided by the total number of molecules N and since the total energy has not changed total number of molecules has not changed the final energy per molecule will be the same and similarly uh, assuming that I have a monatomic gas the energy consists of uh, basically only translational uh, kinetic energy of the center of mass of these gas molecules so um, the energy 1 over 2 mv0 is mass of one molecule uh, initial uh, speed squared average that is initial uh, mean energy per molecule this must be equal to 1 over 2 m0 the final squared average so uh, we can conclude that the mean energy per molecule and the average speed per molecule does not change so uh, we have used this result that the total energy must be conserved uh, to compare the average energy per molecule and average speed of a molecule in the equilibrium situation before and after the removal of the partition before it was e, capital E over N after it's capital E over N before it was 1 over 2 mass of one molecule V I squared average that is epsilon I bar this is equal to epsilon f bar therefore uh, v i bar must be equal to v f bar the same mean energy per molecule what is the ratio of the pressure exerted by the gas in the final situation to that in the initial situation okay so once again since this is a dilute gas elementary kinetic theory tells us that the mean pressure of the gas is two-thirds number density mean kinetic energy per molecule uh, so we can write for the initial mean pressure exerted by the gas two-thirds the number of molecules capital N divided by the initial volume the mean kinetic energy per molecule and in the final situation I have the mean pressure exerted by the gas is two-thirds uh, the number of molecules divided by the final volume mean kinetic energy per molecule because we have argued that doesn't change so uh, this ratio of these two will give me for P initial to P final I have cancellation of 
two thirds, I have cancellation of ends, and then I have cancellation of the mean uh, kinetic energies. Therefore, I find that this ratio, P initial divided by P final, is uh, V final divided by V initial. What is the ratio of the pressure exerted by the gas in the final situation to that of the initial situation? So the ratio in the final situation to the initial situation, I will have the ratio of the initial to final volumes as my answer. Now, uh, if you want to check this result using ideal gas law, well, basically you have P initial. Alternatively, uh, we can also use ideal gas law. Uh, P initial, P initial is equal to the number of moles of gas, universal gas constant times T, and P final, V final is number of moles R times T. Since the temperature uh, doesn't change, we don't have any heat exchange with the environment. Temperature T fixed uh, at T equals T ambient, ambient temperature. Uh, if it is in thermal equilibrium with the environment. If it is not in thermal equilibrium, if it is the, an isolated container, it wouldn't change anyway. So we would have then P initial V initial P final V final equals to 1. For uh, the mean pressures, I would find that P final over P initial is uh, so it's P final V final divided by P initial V initial is 1 so I will have V initial divided by V final so the same result can be seen also using the ideal gas law which uh, actually comes from uh, elementary kinetic theory anyway so it's the same uh, result okay so we talked about uh, variation of gas pressure with volume. We had a container where the gas was uh, only in a portion of this container with initial volume Vi. We suddenly remove a partition and let the gas expand to fill the uh, full volume V final. I assume that I have capital N molecules and monatomic gas for simplicity. Uh, so that the energy only consists of um, kinetic energy, translational kinetic energy of the uh, center of mass. Uh, if you have a diatomic gas uh, or if you have more atoms per molecule, as we will discuss later on, um, you would have a vibrational, possibly vibrational and rotational kinetic energies coming into play uh, with respect for the motion of the atoms with respect to the center of mass. Okay, so has the total energy been changed in this process? Because I don't have any heat flow from the environment. Uh, I have the container in thermal equilibrium with the environment, uh, including the gas inside. Uh, then I would say that there is no heat flow. And since uh, I'm not applying any external forces on these gas molecules. There is no work done on the gas. Uh, so the energy of the gas does not change. And the mean energy per molecule is total energy divided by the number of molecules N. That does not change. And uh, for the mean speed of the molecules, I have 1 over 2 M0 is mass of 1 molecule V square bar. That does not change, so I have the same average speed per molecule. Uh, the mean pressure is two thirds n epsilon uh, kinetic energy uh, bar, so you can see that 
uh, the, this ratio pi bar to pf bar is v final over v initial or the ratio of the final to the initial pressure is v initial to v final. Alternatively, we can see the same result from ideal gas law because this is a dilute gas uh, PV equals to nRT where n is number of moles R is the universal gas constant and we have argued that the energy does not change so that means the temperature is fixed the ratio gives us for P final to P initial V initial to V final